Every good workshop needs a workbench. I decided to make one of my own to perfectly fit the space that I have. Well, that and it was way less expensive than buying something from a store. Here you can see what my basement looked like without a workbench. There was no way to store tools and no good work surfaces. In this video I'll be going over how to build a workbench from 2x4s. One of the first things you need to do is decide on the size you want and all the dimensions. On my website you'll find a full breakdown of all the dimensions for my workbench, but of course you can change things to fit your space. It's a fairly basic project with only four different lengths to cut, the cross members, front and back supports, front legs, and rear legs. If you're not putting a pegboard on the back, you'll just cut all the legs at the same length. First things first, we'll make all of our cuts. I'm building my bench 8 feet wide, so I don't need to be cutting the front and rear supports at all. Cut two legs for the front, and two for the back, and then the cross members. You'll need two just for each end, and then whatever amount you'll be using to hold up the workspace. The ends need to be built as mirror images of each other to fit properly. Mark all your joining points with a square, and try to attach everything perfectly square. Depending on how good your lumber is, this can be very easy or rather tricky. The upper cross member should sit flush with the front legs, and the lower cross member can be placed at any height. I'm putting a shelf on the lower level for storage, and choose to put the lower cross members a foot off the floor. On my second workbench, I put it a little lower at 9 inches. Build the second one with the same dimensions as the first, but flip the front and rear legs around to get a mirrored version of the first end. Joining the ends together should be a fairly straightforward process. Stand the two ends up on their backs and lay two front support boards across them. Square the junctions up and screw them together. No measuring is needed here as they will be lined up with the cross members. Try and select the boards that aren't warped or twisted for this part, or you might find yourself with a wiggly workbench. Once the boards are attached, flip the entire bench over and attach the remaining two boards to the other side to complete the basic structure. If you are putting a pegboard on the back of the bench, now is the time to attach the top of your support. Otherwise, just skip this step. Next, we'll be adding the cross supports for the workbench top and bottom. These will be the same size as the cross members we used on the ends. I went with a 16 inch spacing on the top and about 20 inch spacing on the bottom. Your needs may vary depending on what material you are using for a bench top and shelf. For the bench top and shelf, I used some half inch OSB that I had lying around. I had to notch out the back corners on the top for the uprights. But if you aren't putting a pegboard on the top, you won't need to do that. For the shelf, I had to notch out all four corners for the legs. I could have just cut the boards down so they would fit between the legs, but I wanted to have as much usable space as possible. Plus, I think it looks nicer this way. I screwed the OSB down with some construction screws around the perimeter and added a few into some of the cross members to keep the top from bouncing around. That completes the main workbench. From this point to the end of the video, I'll be showing how I made the support system and mounted the pegboard. There are other methods you could use to do this, but I wanted to use as much scrap material as I could and keep the costs down. To create the support system for the pegboard, I added a second 2x4 directly on top of the workbench's tabletop and screwed that into the rear uprights. I then ripped some 1x4s in half to get 1x2s. Using a jigsaw, I cut notches out of the ends, about an inch deep and 3.5 and inches long so they'd fit over and between the two 2x4s. Two I drilled pilot holes near the center of the notch I removed and then countersunk them so the screws would be flush with the surface of the wood and not interfere with mounting the pegboard. I screwed the pegboard supports into the 2x4s at points where they lined up with the holes on the pegboard. I then mounted the two chunks of pegboard I had to those boards. I do have an entire row of unusable holes in the pegboard where every support runs. I could have put spacers in behind the pegboard to lift it off the boards had I really wanted, but to keep costs down, I didn't. I also don't mind having six rows of pegboard that I can't put hooks into. I can work around that without any issues. For reasons that I don't understand, my pegboard didn't match in the center. I blame the pegboard, but it's probably the fault of some not perfectly squared joints in the workbench. If I had a full sheet of pegboard, this wouldn't have been an issue, but I was using what I had on hand. I added some extra little things to my workbench, some tip-out bins on the rear uprights to hold screws and commonly used hardware, mounted some speakers, cause, I mean, you can't be expected to do projects without tunes to jam to, oh, and I also put some tools and stuff on the pegboard. A few months after building the first workbench, I built a second, and connected them in the corner so I have a wraparound workbench. As you can see, I've added some shelves and a drawer in the second workbench. Being organized makes it so much easier to find my tools and gives me plenty of space to safely work on projects. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and consider subscribing. 
Now get off your butt and go make something.